Um, I um, have been hearing lately uh, uh, about issues regarding the, the way we eat and the foods that we're allowed to eat and uh, comparing the Old Testament covenant uh, where uh, God gave the Israelites specific foods that they were and were not to eat and then how uh, in today's uh, Christian beliefs we're considered in the, uh, under the, uh, the new law that we're not held by those uh, same laws. And I've heard some uh, teachers teaching now that um, it, it is better for us to eat the way God prescribed for us uh, uh, originally in the Old Testament. And I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Well, to say it's better for us <clears throat> might be de- a defensible statement, depending on what we mean by better for us. For our health. We, yeah, if we mean healthier for us, then that's very possibly true. I mean, uh, or at least it, at one time it was, and it may still be. Certainly in biblical times there were diseases uh, that people got from eating pork and from eating shellfish and things like that, which is still possible. It's still possible to get those diseases today. Of course, you can also get other diseases from eating, you know, poultry or, or beef, depending on its, uh, you know, condition and its sanitation and so forth. The thing is that there are specific diseases, especially associated with pork, which required that pork be cooked very thoroughly or else possibly you'd get deadly parasites from it. And uh, and so some would argue that the Israelites, uh, if they didn't cook the pork adequately, would get sick and maybe die, and therefore God just said, don't eat pork. Well, I mean, <clears throat> this may be true. I mean, I- I've read books like this since the early 70s. There was a a medical doctor who wrote a book uh, that I read back in 1970 called None of These Diseases. And he, he talked about the various, you know, ritual laws of cleanness and how they, are, how they coincide with modern medical knowledge. And, and you know, that it's good for you to eat that way. Um, <clears throat> and I don't dispute that. But if, when peop- if people say, well, it's good for us to eat that way, and they mean by that it's morally good or it's more pleasing to God for us to eat that way, then I would say they don't necessarily have the scripture on their side. Uh, because there is, in fact, a, a very great movement in the United States among Christians and possibly elsewhere uh, that <clears throat> is striving to bring Christians under the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, to, to keep them with a mind toward honoring Christ, but still. It's, uh, you know, basically they're saying that Christians have been negligent through these many centuries and that we don't keep the Jewish feasts and we don't keep the Jewish dietary laws and so forth. And I don't agree with that movement. I don't think they have the Bible on their side. Uh, So if you want to eat a kosher diet because you believe it will, it's a healthier way to eat, I don't think anyone should criticize you for that. Uh, It may, in fact, be a healthier way to eat. There's no, as far as I can tell, there's no moral issues involved in it. Um, I mean, it, it probably is healthier to eat no sugar, no refined sugar also, uh, and perhaps no trans fats or whatever. But, but frankly, I don't think it's an immoral thing to eat uh, a candy bar or a potato chip. Um, <clears throat> many people who are health conscious wisely limit those kinds of foods from their diet. But uh, the Bible doesn't anywhere say that eating them is, you know, a sin. Uh, 